There was a dark time in Israel 2,000 years ago. Our readings today in Isaiah are stark reminders of those days long ago. There had been periods of gray over the centuries as the children of Israel moved from seemingly one period of distress to another. Egypt, the wilderness, Babylon, Roman rule. And Roman rule signified oppression, suppression, dominance for Israel's people. It was a time of fear, not knowing what was coming. How long would Roman rule last? Isaiah promised hope of a coming Messiah, and that Messiah would bring peace. He was called the Prince of Peace. In that marvelous list of names in Isaiah 9, 6, we read that he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This was heralded in the angel Gabriel's message to Zacharias, promising him and Elizabeth a son who was to offer a ray of light as a forerunner to prepare the way for the Messiah. Zacharias's prayer of praise included the words that the Messiah would give light to those who sit in darkness to guide us to the path of peace. There was hope, yes. And then Mary, visited by Gabriel, the same angel who had made a promise to Zacharias. The promise to Mary was even more preposterous than a baby born to an older couple. This promise was of a child born to a young teenager who was engaged and the child would be a gift from the Holy Spirit. How, with such confusing news, could Mary be at peace? How did she grab peace? How could she embrace something that had never happened? Never! Mary believed. Yes, she did ask, how can this be? I am a virgin. And without a lot of intimate details, Gabriel assured her it would happen because nothing is impossible with God. Okay, says Mary, let it happen. And it did. You know, clouds frame our lives. They bring darkness, they hide the sun. Yet it is those cloudy times that bring perspective, renewed hope, strength to move on, a chance to reset. Have you noticed that the loveliest sunsets and sunrises witnessed in our city the last few weeks need clouds to reflect the glory of the sun? You know, sometimes when I gaze into that early morning sky or the night sky and see the work of God's fingers, the moon, the stars suspended in space, it seems like all is at peace, all is quiet, all is well. So how to put it all together to help us learn to shelter peace in our own hearts? During the dim days of winter, the dreariness of COVID, the restrictions. The letter St. Paul wrote to the Philippian church has some sterling words when it comes to worry and fear. In chapter four, in the message translation of verse six says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. And before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. That wholeness, that shalom, that beautiful word which encompasses more than the English word peace. Shalom includes a culture, a sense, a feeling altogether signifying fulfillment, completeness, wholeness. So let us embrace the peace that our Lord Jesus alone can give at such a time as this. May God strengthen his love within us that we may be a presence of his peace to all we meet today and this week. He is our peace.